Three teams of exhausted engineers are ready to present their color sensing robots. Now it's up to the judges to decide who is the most creative and who best uses the power of PSOC. Stay tuned for the next installment of the PSOC Challenge. Welcome back to PSOC Challenge. We're at the finals here where all the groups have their robots ready. I'm going to be a judge. I'm Dave Van Ness. Electrons fear me, women revere me. And then we have the chairman, Garang Kavaya. And then we also have Gary Smock. He is one of our longest PSOC users. And with this, I'll hand it over to the chairman. We have three teams ready with their robots. Today, teams will come and show their design so the judges can judge the PSOC in us. The crawlers. Here you can see the robot. There's a line sensor. And then we've got our color sensor. We've got our uh, creativity here with his uh, saber showing the color. We've got our special sensor, which is the ultrasonic sensor. We've got taillights. You can see one of them's flashing. It's wanting to turn right. We treated this kind of like a car. It's actually got a key lock. So you have to press a sequence of buttons to start this thing up. On screen, you can see here is the digital door lock. We made a component for the digital lock. The distance sensor, we actually componentized the distance sensor. That's the ultrasonic sensor, which is finding the wall on the course. This is actually the motor drive circuit. This is interfaced with firmware. Um, there's a PWM and some gating circuitry. This is another special component just for the turn signals. And it takes the PWM signals from the module and reflects those out on the LED. So it's, there's some PLD logic in here to decode and show the LED. This one's quite a bit more complex. This is actually the scanning color detector. It scans through the LED color ratios, transmits those to the board, and it uses a CDS cell to sense the response back. A threshold is used to determine whether it's detected um, a variety of colors. And if you look at the firmware, um, given the ad hoc nature, this is, it's still reasonably clean. Motor control is processed in one side and then color processing is done in another level. Great job, Ross and team. Now we go to Team Sockbot. Team Sockbot! So this is our robot. And to start with, we have our pilot Yoda. Our PSOC uh, dev kit forms the brains for the robot. We have a speaker, which plays Star Wars theme music while we're running, which is very important for uh, team morale. We have um, some adjustable uh, resistors, potentiometers, that allow us to change uh, parameters of our code while we're running in real time, so that helps us debug very quickly. And then we have a spoiler, which gives us extra speed. It's actually got us about 20% faster. The fire wheels also help us with cornering, keep the rubber softer. We have our line sensor in the front. We have our color sensor and our uh, distance sensor so we don't run into any walls or Imperial Death Stars. So here's the uh, schematic within our PSOC device. Part of our schematic is our A to D converter, which samples all of our analog inputs, and it does this automatically with a hardware sequencer. Uh, next, we have our centroid calculator. So once we get the, the data from our line sensor, we then do a centroid calculation, which gives us both the line position relative to the center, so either left or right, as well as its width. We have an LCD interface, which helps a lot for debugging and operation. We have menus uh, that we can select different features, as well as show real-time data. Lastly, we have a, another component uh, called the wave DAC, and you can assign an arbitrary waveform, and for this case, we assigned a sine wave, and we can change the frequency to create an arbitrary sine wave. Uh, which we have uh, some firmware that plays music. So we do the Imperial March from Star Wars. The sine wave is generated completely in hardware using DMA and a lookup table. So there's almost no processing uh, overhead with that. The final tab is for our color sensor. Here we have hardware PWM to modulate our LEDs. And that helps us get a more uniform response from our photo sensor. And our photo sensor then goes into an op amp configured as a trans impedance amplifier, or TIA. And then that again is converted by the ADC to measure each of the R, G, and B intensities. 
the intensities go into an algorithm that generates the actual position within the color chart, and then we look to find the maximum distance between the colors in the red, green, and blue quadrants, or cyan, or yellow, or magenta. Thank you, Greg and team. Now we go to Team Hermes. Team Hermes! Yeah. On our display, we've got a few different things that we show for debugging purposes. So we're showing uh, the current line sensor status on the LCD. You can see it shows two X's in the middle of the eight sensors. So it thinks the line's in the middle too. If I move my um, test line from left to right, the display moves to, de to show you what is being detected by the line sensor. We also have a distance sensor, and that distance is shown up here, 29 centimeters currently. If I place an object closer, it'll change. Here, 22, if I move it closer, it will reduce. This is our PSOC Creator Schematic. The first tab is a system tab. It um, shows some stuff that helped govern the state of the robot as a whole. Uh, we've got a couple interrupts here. We've got our software timer for the uh, PID control system, which runs at 10 kilohertz. A motor control we achieved with two separate PWMs and two GPIOs to set the um, direction left and right. To set the motors to go forward or in reverse, you set the direction bit and that goes out on a pin and changes the direction of the motor drive. And to change the speed of the motors, you change the PWM compare value and the speed goes up and down. We have a line sensor. Our line sensor is uh, made up of eight pins. These are SIOs, so they have a configurable reference, and we're using the, the VDAC as the reference for these. Next up, um, voltage monitoring and distance sensor. Two different signals going into the ADC. We had our battery voltage, and we had our distance sensor output. The battery voltage we monitored because we found that over the course of multiple runs, our battery voltage would decrease as the energy in the batteries was used up. And that was affecting our performance and affecting our PID tuning. Great job, everyone. Uh, now you can leave the room, and judges will deliberate and come up with the scores. Well, that was a heck of a lot of work they did in a very small time. I'm looking forward to next webisode where we will see the race and see which one is the fastest.